Welcome to the D6 Family Ministry Podcast, a place where ideas, principles, and personalities come together to give you a ministry advantage that empowers the church and home. I don't know anything more important in our society or in the kingdom of God than to help the church help the family. Discipleship is not an event, it's a way of life. And one day it just hit me that discipleship at home was not about doing more. It was about inviting Christ into what we were already doing. The goal of family ministry is not families sitting on the couch, holding hands and singing Kumbaya. The ultimate goal is families that love God, love people and make disciples of all peoples. So that's why you're here. You're here to say one hour a week, as significant and as awesome as it is, we know that it's not enough and we want to be intentional with every hour. You're listening to the D6 Podcast. Here are your hosts, Marianne Howard, Ron Hunter, and Josh Wooten. You guys, I love the Bible. (laughs) I love the Bible. It's living and active is what God's word says. It is a sharp, sharp weapon. (laughs) And so I, our guest today, Dr. Michelle White is going to talk to us about how to different methods on how to study the Bible. And it's so creative and so practical and so good. So I thought I'd ask you guys, you guys are two trusted leaders and you've been studying and reading God's word for a long time. Is there a method that's worked best for you or something that's really stuck and that you've been the most consistent with in terms of how you approach the word of God? In my age, I have found that I do better going slow. You know, in my younger days, I would teach and I would, you know, teach an entire, sometimes I would try to teach an entire chapter in one week. And I have found myself I can spend two weeks at sometimes on one verse and I think slowing down and I've the Logos Bible app and software has been a a game changer for me many years ago. And I find myself digging way deeper into one verse at a time than I ever did. And it became, you know, one of those things that even as a family, if we were studying a verse, we would a lot of times put a verse up, in the house and we could go every day. How did this relate to your life today? You know, and be a topic of discussion because it was just one verse and we'd keep it through the whole week. And just, it it was wild how different days it could speak in different ways. And that's the way the spirit and the word can work so often. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Marianne. I actually am going to use an example that I'm watching before my very eyes with my teenage boys. Um, our youth pastor has his leadership team students walking through something called a journal. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, I have, have watched my 16 year old son be consistently writing scripture, rewriting the scriptures. And then there's some discussion questions out to the left mm-hmm. and it's just teaching him the fact that he's excited about literally because boys in writing. Okay. Y'all uh, <laughs> that yeah. was, I had to bribe my children to learn cursive. Yes. I'm not mom, but he, he's so excited to rewrite the scriptures and there's something happening in the brain when you're writing it. And then there's discussion questions on the left and they meet ever so many weeks to discuss it. And I, for a year now, he's been rewriting the new Testament and just loves it. I don't have to tell him, which we shouldn't, it's his walk with God, you know, but just the fact that he's, he's excited. He wants to be ready for the accountability. He's, you know, writing, rewriting scripture. And so I have loved that tool for my boys. I have seen such a transformation in the last year of their owning and loving God's word for themselves. And so for me, I'm like, I need to be writing scripture like that. It's so great. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned writing, but for me, it's always about a pen in hand. Mm -hmm. I've got to, for me to retain, for me to be a real study, I've got to have a pen in my hand and I will mark, I will sometimes diagram Sometimes I'll put brackets around the subject. Sometimes I'll circle verbs. 
Uh, there are times I'll, I'll write a, a question out there because I'm really vulnerable. If you ever read, I've got two Bibles I mark in extensively. If you ever read my Bible, I'm like, really, God? You know, I'll, I'll ask the question beside a verse like, wow, that must have been hard. Can I do this? You know, so it's marking, you know, for me, that's mine. But let me give advice to our, our listeners here. Of all the different studies out there, whether it's journaling or topical or a, an app or, and by the way, when I say pen in hand, you can do it with a stylus today. You know, I, there are times I will grab a screenshot of, of there and I will use my stylus. But here's the here's the best method. I, I want to. I just want to give you the best method. And this is what shocked my co-hosts here because I can't ever think in superlatives, right? This is the absolute best method for our listeners. The one that you will stick with consistently. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, just find what works for you and use it consistently. That's going to be the best, best approach. Um, Dr. Michelle White's going to give us a variety of options in here. And I do think mixing it up helps, by the way. Uh, change up. Look at what you do. I know some some friends who, you know, they don't use just pens. They highlight and they have very specific things. They highlight certain colors, um, you know, but find what works for you. Let's listen to her insight on how she instructs others, uh, especially her kiddos, on studying the Word of God and different approaches to it. And we'll debrief on the other side. Did you know that because of D6 Heroes, Randall House and D6 Family are able to equip families far and wide in the area of generational discipleship? Due to the financial gifts of both individuals and churches, D6 curriculum has been translated into multiple languages and distributed across the globe, including restricted access countries for use in the underground church. In short, because of the financial gifts of individuals like you, moms and dads all over the world can pass their faith to the next generation of believers. Would you consider becoming a D6 hero? A D6 hero is an individual who invests their financial resources in the ministry of Randall House and D6 family to ensure that believers can transfer their faith through the church and home. Please visit d6hero.com to join the ranks of our heroes and to explore other areas where your financial investment can have an impact. We're live from Orlando, Florida at the D6 conference, and I am joined by Dr. Michelle White. Dr. White is a Christ-focused wife, parent, grandparent, licensed counselor, licensed psychologist, speaker, and best-selling author. She is the author of Against the Grain, Raising Christ-Focused Children from A to Z, and Digging in Family Style, an interactive Bible study feast, which sounds amazing to me. So let's look at that. Uh, Michelle is passionate about families, studying together, and I'm thrilled to have this conversation with you today. Thank you for having me. So what is the benefit of family Bible study as opposed to just individual study? I know that's something that you absolutely love. So tell us a little I bit do. about I'm that. I'm a little bit of a Bible nerd, so I'll try <laughs> okay. to keep my answers concise. That's all right. Individual Bible study is really important. It's very important for the family to have their own individual lane of Bible studies that they do together. Then they come together as a family and study. The benefit is from young kids, from two months old all the way up to your adult children. If you're studying one passage together, you have one biblical worldview lens by which you're looking at the world, your problems, your successes, your failures, and then you're able to reframe them as a family and then walk together as according to what God has called the family to do. Now, I have a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old and a 9-year-old and a 7-year-old. And some families, you know, they keep going. The gap is even bigger. Yes. How can I bridge that gap with my kids that are teenagers and still young kids? Mm, great question. You start where they are. You ask the question, what can my child really digest? 
can a two-year-old draw the pictures that you may find in Genesis? Start there. Can your five-year-old look through a passage and circle all the words that look alike if you're studying that as a family? Can your 14-year-old look at the political climate because they may be your child that likes to argue all the time? Right. And so you have them do the political climate of wherever you're studying. So you find one book that everyone will commit to studying as a family, and then you give each child an assignment based on their age and based on their ability to digest and unpack the text together. How does this lend itself to discipleship? Obviously, that's what we're about here at D6, so tell us how that lends itself to discipleship and even intergenerational discipleship is what it sounds like. Yes, it is. It begins in the home. I can't emphasize that enough. So starting with mom and dad, being on the same page, deciding this is what we will do to disciple our children. We're preparing them. Now, much like you, I have many kids. I have five, and ours range in age from 14 to 25. So we have had a plethora of conversations about what does this intergenerational discipleship look like. As we're pouring into them, our expectation is that they're grabbing on to what they're catching and And then they're pouring into their school, they're pouring into their church friends, they're pouring into the community. And then now we see it on the other side where one of our adult children is married with a baby and now she's pouring into her the exact same way that we did with her. Now, I have a Bible degree. My husband is a pastor and he has a Bible degree. Um, You self-identified as a Bible nerd, right? When we first started this conversation, (laughs) but there are some people who are like, I'm new to this myself. Yeah. How do I teach someone when I don't even know how to do it? Where does that parent start? That's a great question. They start from a desire. If they have a desire to study God's word and they stop and they begin to pray and ask Mm -hmm. God for understanding, then they will be able to unlock different things that they may not have been able to on their own. I have a method that I use in my book that's called Pray, Pursue, Rightly, and Yield. And so I tell people, pray constantly. So you're pursuing God's Word. So if you have that desire and that yearning in your heart as an individual, regardless if you're a professional, regardless if you have a Bible degree, regardless of your status in your church, that desire, God will then begin to pour into you from His Word accurately. That's that rightly, rightly divide. And then you begin to yield to what He says. You begin to yield to the Holy Spirit so that you then can be on fire and become a Bible nerd. Mm -hmm. yourself and then pour that into your children. Yeah, we're having a great conversation with Dr. White. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this message. Introducing D6 Everyday Foundations, strengthening the building blocks of faith. We are thrilled to announce the launch of D6 Everyday Foundations, a groundbreaking curriculum designed to empower churches and families in their journey of faith. This innovative program aims to align the church and home, fostering a strong foundation and unshakable confidence in God's Word. D6 Everyday Foundations boasts a comprehensive three-year scope, focusing on major themes and characters from the Bible while also addressing pertinent cultural issues. With this curriculum, we aim to equip individuals of all ages to stand firm in their faith and navigate the challenges of our ever-changing world. At the heart of D6 Everyday Foundations is a church and home partnership recognizing the vital role both play in nurturing and cultivating a vibrant faith. Through this collaboration, families will be empowered to prioritize and emphasize God's Word in their daily lives. Together, let's lay the foundation for a generation grounded in truth and empowered to impact the world around them. Let's hold the building blocks of faith firmly in place. To order D6 Everyday Foundations and embark on this exciting journey of faith, visit d6family.com today. So Dr. White, we're talking about family Bible study, family devotional time, right? Is there a role that the church can play to equip parents to lead their families in Bible study? Absolutely. Make it something that's important for the church. 
the church needs to say that. I think what we see now is there's a ministry for women, a mm -hmm. ministry for men, a ministry for kids, a ministry for teens. We need to make sure that the church understands that there can be a ministry for families to bring them all together. An example that I have often used, if you're studying a text together as a family and you have a crisis or if you have a success, if everyone is studying the same passage together, then you're able to support each other, you're able to celebrate with each other, you're able to understand what God's call may be for your family better than you can in these individual lanes. And so as the church begins to make that something that's important, then we can start to see families thrive as well. So, uh, like you said, it, sometimes ministries are kind of siloed. You have yes. your women's ministry and your men's. The same is true for Bible studies, right? It's either like, here's your women's Bible study. Even, I mean, it's kind of old school walking into a, you know, Bible bookstore or something that would be true. a brick and mortar these days. <laughs> but uh, thinking about the categories, you know, here's a children's Bible study and here's an older adult's Bible. It, it's all segregated in that are there resources that can help families have family devotion time, have family time? What, If so, what are those? Please tell us. There are so many different options. I love the fact that we can keep it simple. I tell families, if you have a commitment to study, get a Bible and a notebook. Keep it simple. Everyone should have their own Bible. And so maybe for your two and your four-year-old, it's a storybook Bible. Maybe for your teen, it's an inductive teen, uh, uh, teen Bible. Maybe for your adults, it's a study Bible. But then the resources that I recommend are things that will help you study. We don't always have to run to a book, and that's funny because I'm, I wrote a book about right. Bible study, <laughs> but we don't always have to run to an actual hardcover book to help us praying first, asking God first, where do we want to start? If we want to start in the book of Genesis, do we want to start First John? We decide as a family where we're going to start, and then the resources become a word study dictionary, maybe an encyclopedia. I know that's probably a foreign word for some of the <laughs> listeners. Right. Uh, we start with those type of items that will help us rightly divide. The words that we see in Hebrew and the words that we see in Greek don't have the same meaning today as they did then. So let's dig in and find out what did God mean by his text. We don't want to have resources that are going to make us focus on ourselves. We want to have resources that will help us unpack God's word to focus on him because the Bible is 100% about him and not about us. That's right. One of the things that you said earlier, talking about the church helping equip, um, is that it, it kind of has to come from the leadership, right? Yes. Like, it, it, what does that look like practically? So I don't think I hear you saying, don't have kids ministry, no. don't have teen ministry, no. don't have things for women or men, right? right. Uh, so what does that practically look like in the church? Practically, it can be a very easy step that have your women's ministry, men's ministry, kids ministry, teen ministry all come together possibly once a month. What are you studying? Can we all get on the same page and maybe as a church study the same text? What does family ministry look like in our church? How do we value it? And not just by word, but in deed. What are we doing? What's the applicable steps we're taking to show that? So maybe one of those practicalities is coming together once a month and sharing what's in your Bible study that can be applied to our Bible study and then vice versa. I would then echo that in the home. If we have these different silos, as you referenced, then maybe once a week, mom, dad, teen, elementary, middle school are sitting down and talking about what have we studied in our individual studies that we can use as a family this week to pray about, to minister to others about, and to focus on. Yeah, that's really good. And for those of you who are listening who use the D6 curriculum, that is a really easy way. All of the resources that they have, nursery all the way up to older adults, Everyone studying the same passage, that's a great way to utilize that curriculum and those resources. Um, Dr. White, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Grab her books. Uh, let's have an interactive Bible study feast. I'm going to grab that one and take it home and <laughs> take a look at that. But thank you so much for being here with us thank at D6. Thank you for having me.
All right. Which method of hers did, did you think, wow, I hadn't really thought about it, or maybe I thought about it and I had thought about it for a while, which, which mm-hmm. method jumped out at you that was kind of different? Uh, I loved her acronym. Oh, sorry. Pursue okay. rightly and yield. You know, yeah. that, it, 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 you know, it, like you said earlier, whatever works and you can do consistently, but I love that little acronym that she used. My brain works well with those. Keeping it yes. simple. Yeah, I, I loved her statement. Start from a desire for God's word. Start from a desire. And I think when I hear um, any any podcast or message about, you know, getting into God's word and reading God's word and figuring out what works for you, I think the thing that we always have to have in front of our eyes and our hearts is that the reason why we have God's words is not transactional, it's relational. And yeah. so we, we have God's word for the relate to for God to relate to us. And so we have to be really careful not to make it about a checklist and not to make it transactional, yeah. but that we're making it relational. I think I always have to have that in front of me when I listen to any kind of here's this tactic and that tactic and this tactic. And then I can be very checklist oriented. And I always have to remember that God gave me his word relationally because he loves me and he wants me to know him and the way we know God is through his word. And it's about relationship, not about transaction. Yeah. I love that. You know, the, the, the thing that I think that stands out to me on this is kind of what you guys were hinting at, pick something that appeals to you. When people that I find coming through high school that hate books Usually when I have a couple of questions for them, I quickly discover they dislike books because they've always been assigned to them. They never got to pick what they read. If you're going to begin the study of God's word, pick what interests you. And yeah. there's some places I would suggest you to avoid. Leviticus, um, Numbers, Revelation. I mean, there's a handful of, a handful of books out there. You just don't need to start. Um, and and you know, if you don't know where to start, Get with you know, like your student minister, your children's minister, your lead pastor and say, hey, where do you suggest? I promise they'll have some good insight for you and, and let them take you to either the book of James or the book of John or Proverbs, you know, depending on how you want to go at this. But there's some fun places to start that will give you some great wins right off the bat. And uh, again, the consistency of doing it's more important than the mass like Josh gave us counsel early. It's not about checking off the list that, oh, I read my Bible through in a year or I read it through four times this year. You just need to be listening to God, letting the Holy Spirit churn that scripture inside of your life. Let it just simmer in that crock pot of your spirit and uh, allow it to become the flavor that enhances your life. That's what you want to do. Next week, we're going to uh, pick up with Greg Gunn. And I, I will tell you, we did some comparison of notes as we were planning out the podcasts. And uh, Greg's a new voice to the D6 podcast, but I am convinced it's a powerful voice. Yes. He gave me insights that with kids that are grown, I look back and go, oh, my word, I needed your voice 30 years ago. So regardless of what season of life you're in right now, I hope you take the insights that Greg is going to give us and pass them along to the newly married couples who are just beginning to start their families because it could change their generations to come. Promise you that if you listen next week. We'll see you then. You've been listening to the D6 Podcast. You can learn more about D6 at d6family.com. 